I went on the hunt for the best desserts you can find in Las Vegas. So I ended up narrowing it down to three really spectacular desserts. Now, Las Vegas is deceiving if you've never been because it's technically just sort of one area, one street, but it's huge. Everything is massive. I had a list of 12 desserts I wanted to try. I'd still be there eating giant desserts. You're gonna meet Gracie in this episode. She's a good friend of How to Kick It. So I'm gonna take you on this journey with me in Las Vegas to try the desserts. And not only that, I'm gonna recreate one of them. This is a great dessert and you can recreate it at home and you can make it your own. Hey guys, I'm here at Jardin, which I call Jardin, because I'm Canadian, and I realize that here in Vegas, but they have a flower pot cake that I can't wait to try because it reminds me of a cake that's on the channel. You guys have probably seen it. So let's go inside and have a flower pot cake. Oh, look, but the cake has real flowers and the pot is made out of chocolate. This dessert is made with a chocolate flower pot. So the flower pot is actually just dark chocolate and it's spray painted with like a terracotta chocolate. So it really looks like a terracotta pot. Inside was layers of chocolate cake and chocolate mousse. On top there's a chocolate crumb and then they use fresh edible pansies as the flowers. It's perfect wow. combination with the citrus of the raspberry, saturation of the mousse and the cake. Oh, it's good. <laughs> And he's right, it's not overly sweet. Because this much chocolate, when it's really sweet, is too much. Oh. <laughs> Every single bite is so chocolatey and rich and indulgent and you get sort of every texture of chocolate from the crispy snap of the pot to the light, fluffy, spongy chocolate cake to the rich sort of milk chocolatey mousse, and then you get the really dark chocolate from the black cocoa and the Oreo crumbs. This dessert was intense. I feel bad that you're not eating, Will. Everyone say hi to Will behind the camera. He's here. There he goes. Mm. This is good. Do you see this multitasking? Well, you don't, but Will is holding the camera and eating and eating, and then you have to, I love this. This is amazing. <laughs> Technically, you could make this dessert at home, but you probably need a few tools that the average person doesn't have. And then also, in order to get the pot really nice, you need really high quality chocolate. You need to temper it well, so you can get that snap and it really holds. And then most people, I'm guessing, if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments, don't have like a chocolate spray gun to paint the outside of the pot to look like terracotta. To me, it hits all the points. It I has agree. presentation, that's very obvious. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think, you know, with the cakes I make, people always ask, do they taste good? Because they think it's yeah. only presentation. So this has presentation, it has flavor, mm -hmm. it has textures. Should I skip the middle? We could skip the middle and go to the last one. Do you want to talk about the one that you're Yeah, I know. Best? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, so we're gonna shh, we're gonna bypass the middle. The last spot I visited was Tao, and they make a dessert that is a giant fortune cookie. It was huge, Shuchi. Huge. It was like the size of my face. Huge. Wait, is there a four? There's three fortunes! Yeah. <gasps> Thank you so much! Stop it! Am I gonna read mine? Yes. Yes, you go first. It says, you've eaten too much dessert today. <laughs> you see the accuracy, right? How did they know? I don't think I can read this on my YouTube channel. The fortunes are naughty. It's not PG. And then Gracie was like, maybe they're not all like that. And then she read hers. And then Will had the naughtiest fortune of all. So I'm sorry guys, as I said when I was there, I'll say it again, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. So okay. we're ready for dessert. Well, how do you normally eat a cake? Like, what if I just try and like do it like that? So one half of it was filled with a dark chocolate mousse and the other half of it was filled with a white chocolate mousse, which you can't tell from the outside. Okay, is that bad? I'm taking all of this. I'm going for it, yeah. I'm going to take this. Okay. There's a lot of cookie here, but oh, ooh, hold on. Oh, mm. that's not what I thought it was. Me neither. The dessert is really fun because 
you have no choice but to break it open in order to eat it. So you just kind of smash it and then you use pieces of the cookie to dip into the mousse. And if you want, you can scoop up some fruit. So it's kind of like eating sweet nachos, if that makes sense. You could make this dessert at home, but I would say this, the hardest part would be getting that cookie and being able to fold the cookie. Because even when you make traditional fortune cookies, it's all about timing, right? Because when the cookie is still warm, like not burning hot so you don't burn yourself, but still warm, that's when you have to pick it up and fold it, and then it hardens. So imagine doing that at this size. So it's the calm, you know at the end of the night when you're full and you get dessert and you're almost like winding down? Yeah. Those fortunes will wake you back up, <laughs> you have a new something to discuss, and yeah. then you get to smash into this dessert and share it. So in terms of presentation, this to me is very different. It had everything. I keep coming out of center, guys. I started to take Pilates and I'm completely off balance. This side of my body is just like weighing me down. So I just keep doing this like, and so, oh, by the end of the video, I'm like, guys. <laughs> okay, where were we? So the second dessert, let's travel back in time, is a dessert called the Titanic. On the menu, it just says the Titanic. This dessert was as big as my face. Um, I can't share with you, Gracie. There isn't enough. I don't think there's enough. Sorry, Will. I, I don't think there's enough. This. It involves one of my favorite things, which is ice cream. And it was basically a flourless chocolate tort on the bottom, two giant scoops of ice cream. Then the whole thing was domed with fresh whipped cream. Then the whipped cream was dotted with slices of strawberries and slices of like a candied pineapple. One shovel or two. Um, I, I'll take one to start. Okay. <laughs> it was massive. Is this the boat the and that's bow? the yeah. iceberg? Or is this the oh, Titanic? Is this the iceberg? I mean, it's iceberg -y. And this, the sprinkling oh. on the top, what's that? That's the hazelnuts. Okay. Brownie at the bottom. Mm. It's kind of like moussey. Like it's so... It's lighter than you think it's it. It's lighter than a brownie. Yeah. But heavier than a mousse. Mm -hmm. I can find out for you why they call it the Titanic. That would be great. That would be amazing. Uh, they always say it's because afterwards you're sunk. <laughs> yeah, so we ate. We really enjoyed the Titanic. Gracie, Will, and I, we did not finish it. We sank. Anything else you want to talk about this Carmoni family? Carmoni? Who's the Carmoni family? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Carmines. I can't get over that the menu just says Titanic. Like there's zero <laughs> warning, like zero. Ice cream, yum. Whipped cream, yum. Then it had fresh fruits, yum. It had chopped roasted nuts for some crunch and some texture, yum. And it was absolutely a wow factor. And this is why I'm choosing to recreate this dessert because this one, in my opinion, is the easiest one that you guys can make at home. And no matter what level of baker you are, you can do this. Am I gonna make a dessert? I'm just here for the dessert. The sooner I make it, the sooner I eat it. I have a brownie here and I'm gonna take it out of this pan and this will be the base of our Titanic. I don't think mine should be a Titanic. Can we pick another boat? One that doesn't sink and one that does not have mice on it, go. <laughs> is that a boat? It probably is. This is chocolatey and this is cold. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. And I cut this in half. You could make two. You could have two different sets of friends over. Don't tell them about each other. And I'm gonna trim off the ends. I just wanna reveal the fudginess. You think I should do three ice creams? The Titanic only had two. So you know what I'm gonna do? That's what I'm gonna do. This is my all time favorite ice cream. Like if I'm buying ice cream at the store, I have never done this before. This might not be that even, so I'm going to cut this. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. No, actually it's not. It can't possibly be. Not on how to cake it. I love this. I feel like I'm building a ship. But because we're using small pints, not big cartons of ice cream, here goes the chunk. Portia. What? Portia. Portia? Yeah. Here it comes. Montrose. Concurrente. Who 
It's a ship name generator. Like, is there some mogul sitting around like, I feel like building a ship, what should I call it? So I have a bunch of sweet treats. Like I said, the Titanic had strawberries, pineapple, and cookies. Um, we've just forgotten about fruit. This is my nemesis right here, because I cannot resist this. Mm. Mm. I love these. I'm going to scoop on my whipped cream, and I'm gonna start to ice it on and then I'm gonna pipe and, and create some texture with the whipped cream. I love that you're doing this like your ice making. I can't help it. I can't help it. You don't label your invention? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Okay, so what do I do? What do I do? I honestly don't know what I want to do. Hold on. Do you know what this is reminding me of? So the other thing I thought was bougie when I was a kid, it was called Vianetta. Do you remember? <laughs> but did you not think it was like, you thought it was so like expensive. I loved that ice cream. I even loved the texture of it. Now I want it. Can we Google if they still make it? Does this look, you know what this looks like? It looks like a, yeah, I was gonna say, it looks like a, like a judge's wig. Yeah. <laughs> I have to put these on. Like I can't not use the I kind of want to put something here. It whipped cream. I'm sorry, whipped cream. I'm sorry to compare you to buttercream, but you don't have the hold of buttercream. Where are the nubs? Here they are. Why don't I line up the nubs at the bottom? <laughs> These are the people who jump ship. Hey, you guys. <laughs> what did you say? Capones? Carmonis. <laughs> this is not like being at Carmine's where this was presented to me. I made it and now I'm gonna eat it. Oh. How easy was this? Well, it wasn't easy because you needed to be fast, but I would break it down in sections. I keep the base and the ice cream in the freezer until you're ready and then have all your toppings ready, whip your cream, do it and eat it. So the minty bite is the mintiest, but now I want to have like a chocolatey mint bite. I forgot the fresh mint. Oh, see? <laughs> Get the plants. We need to add foliage. Oh, there we go. Now it's, now it's bougie. Three other spoons here and some napkins. Huh? They just don't want to eat in front of camera. I'm the one who has to do that. So, as you can see, you can create a presentation dessert. It doesn't have to be really difficult. You can bake as little or as much as you want. It's just all about how you put it together and how you enjoy it by yourself while everyone watches. No, share it with your friends, for real. <laughs>